Hi, this is Biff Buffer from Saxon. You're watching Metal Voice. Yes, rock off your eyebrows. Hey guys, today on the Metal Voice, guess what we're doing? What we're doing, Alan? We're gonna go interview Saxon. Biff! Biff. Biff. Heavy metal legend himself. So we're getting our uh, car ready. We're gonna do a mobile shoot. First time getting out of the massive studio that we have, that Metal Voice massive studio, and we're going on location. On the road. Alan, let's load them up. Load them up, Alan. I think that's it, and we're off to the races. Can't wait to see Biff. Saxon! Before I drive, I'll show you got my sax and a strong arm of the law, denim and leather. We're listening to some tunes on the way. The Inner, Inner Sanctum. Sanctum. That's probably one of my favorite sax on albums. And of course, the new one, Call, Call to Call Arms. Here you go, Alan. You hold this? Yep. So, whatever you got, we are off. Right for Florida, and there it is. Yeah. There's the Florida Electric right here. Park right in park right in front. Good, man. Hey, guys. We're at the gig. Go. Metal Guru, Biff, ready to go. He should be any minute. Looking Our forward to interviewing guy. him. Chris Gate, doing the sound. So we're just trying to get some readings, get some levels, and see. Test, test, testing, test. testing. The mic. the mic keeps moving. Can you hear the moving of the core? Here we go. We're going up. That's where Biff is. Can we get a little dark, guys? Yeah, we go. Welcome to a special edition of the Metal Voice. We're here with uh, Biff, legendary singer of the heavy metal pioneer Saxon. Good to be here. Biff. Let me just start by saying welcome to, to Montreal. And secondly, what took you so long to get back? You... Making, making an effort to get back into these territories again. Great. Do, do you remember the last time you played in Montreal? Um, Which tour it was? No. Innocence is no excuse, maybe? Oh, 86. Friday, February 7, 1986. I was there in the front of the stage. Well, there you go. <laughs> and looking forward to seeing the show again tonight. So uh, how's the tour been going so far? Great. Good. Great reactions. The album's doing really well. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And when you uh, look out in the audience these days, what, what kind of demographics are you seeing out there? Well, it depends what the age limit of the, the gig is. Right. So uh, generally it's three or four generations, really. And when you're, you know. when you're playing uh, bars or theaters or like on, on this tour, how does that, uh, you have to change your set list? It's been a while since you've been back. Do you have to make any adjustments uh, to your set list or? No, not really. Not really. We might, we might do it a little bit different tonight, but I don't. Not, not too much, no. No, I mean, in, um, down in America, we, we tend to feature Power and the Glory quite a bit. So that was a big album. Yeah, that was a big album for you. And yeah. uh, So you may maybe concentrate a little bit more on the hits here? Con con uh, um, well, we play them anyway. Right, so. exactly. Yeah. And uh, so again, we're going back to returning to North America now, probably because of the great album, Call to Arms, which was released here a couple of weeks ago at the end of September in North America. Yeah, it was 27th, actually. Yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, the album sounds great. It's a great album, a solid album. We've already reviewed it on one of our shows. I, can you, can you, what was the experience of recording this, uh, this album? You said it was the best in 20 years. Why, why would well, that be? Well, I, I think this album, we went back to our roots quite a bit. Uh, uh, musically and lyrically, I went back to a more never surrender, you know, right. surviving against the odds type thing. Uh, Battle of the Working Man back in '79. So <clears throat> I think we went back to a more uh, a more simpler time with the with the writing of the songs and uh, concentrated on getting great riffs really and great melodies. And um, you know the the team that we had working with us was was on on it. You know, and the album sounds more British again probably. So that's probably what I mean. Yeah, and you know songs like uh, back in '79. I mean. You're embracing your past. I mean, Sebastian Bach from uh, Skid Row was on TV the other night saying, you know what, I'm 43, I don't feel like singing You've Gone Wild anymore. I want to be known for my current and more, mm. most recent music. It's a fine line. How do you manage that? 
Uh, well, you just have to stay current with the albums. I mean, you have to write albums that people relate to, uh, and songs that people relate to in a genre that uh, that um, you know suits suits you really. Uh, you know, you can you can you can never get away from your uh, from your big hits because they're in people's DNA. And uh, you know why would you want to get away from them anyway? And let's get to some of the other songs on here. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, surviving against all odds. That's how does how does Saxon survive against all odds all, all these years? Uh, no, not really. I mean, the, the you know the guys in the band, the great chemistry, and um, we're able to tour the world without uh, killing each other. <laughs> so um, you know that helps. That helps. And speaking of the band, I mean, it's a phenomenal playing on this album. I mean, it's uh, some of you. Uh, I mean, with. Uh, uh, Quinn and uh, Nigel, you've been together for years, and uh, is that is that helps with the chemistry of the band compared to changing members? Or well, we don't like changing members. It, it's not good to change members all the time. Uh, the fans don't like it. Sometimes you have to do it for some reasons, you know, that are out of your control. But I think if the band stays solid, you know, you can build up a great fan base with that band. Right. And you know, each each person in the band has his own character. Uh, uh, so you know, the if you got if you got five fairly charismatic guys in the band, it can be, it can be great for the fans. And uh, Call to Arms is a great video, a great song. Uh, you know, the lyrics make you think of World War One, but I think those lyrics can be applied to today's situation as well. Yeah, I, <clears throat> it's a it's a soldier's song. You know, it can be can relate to Afghanistan or or Second World War or or any war really, where where uh, where where you know where where young men and women go off um, to fight and to die, and um, you know thinking of their loved ones really. Right, exactly. That's what it's all about. And the ballad of the working man. I listen to that. I almost feels like I'm right in the pub with you having a pint. It's a great, <laughs> it's a great song. Yeah, it's uh, it's fairly live that track actually. It's a pretty live recording. Um, so yeah, it's good. And um, with the DigiPack bonus, can we tell us a little bit of what's what's happening there? Yeah, we got this. Uh, we found we found seven seven multi-track tapes, the old two-inch tapes, uh, in an old in an old manager's attic. <laughs> and uh, one of them was the Donington tape that we we thought was lost. Uh, there there is a couple of bootleg versions of cassette uh, around. This one's the sort of definitive uh, from the I think the Rolling Stones mobile, I think. And um, yeah, we put it on the player and it sounded fantastic. So I thought I'd give it away with a new album. Right. And that, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was like the first Donington ever. Yeah, was that, that show. Yeah, it was the first Donington, and it's 1918. It's just a bit of a snapshot of what was happening then. There was like 60,000 people. You walked yeah. out on stage. How that feel? Well, it was great. You know, we we had wheels of steel high in the charts, and uh, we were the we were we were the only new band on there really. Uh, but yeah, it was great. Do you remember some of the other bands that were there? Yeah, there was Rainbow, Priest, Scorpions, April Wine. April Wine. Uh, Riot was on. Was Riot, exactly. Yeah, so it was pretty, pretty. Not a massive bill, but it's a one day festival, yeah. So. And uh, so you see this little revival happening. I mean, Accept had a good album, a good year with their new album, and uh, Raven came out, another new album favorite, came out a couple of years ago. Are you seeing this type of revival? Yeah, happening? There, there is a bit of a revival going, but I think a lot of it, a lot of the key is the albums. I think the Accept album's pretty good. Right. Uh, you know, our album's pretty good. Oh, it's excellent. Um, you know, so. Uh, just, just, just. Uh, I think sometimes you get a good album. It just inspires people and gets people psyched up about it. So after this tour, you're heading back to Europe. I, I looked at your schedule. When do you ever stop? Well, this year we're not stopping much at all. <laughs> I noticed. We're over 160 shows. So, Unbelievable. Um, but we have we have made an effort on this album to really promote it by tour. Right. And so. another uh, pioneering band to start out the same time as you. Be opening for you in Europe, Anvil. Yeah, yeah. Have you, have you met them before? Have you yeah, they, they opened for us in in England uh, a couple of years ago. Do you see any similarities between the bands? I mean, uh, these are bands that were pioneers that led the charge back in 79, as you say, and um, maybe didn't get the recognition that I feel they deserved. Well, the thing is with Anvil, they, they, um, they, had a, they had a couple of great songs, didn't they? Metal on Metal, and, and uh, I, I just think that they just obviously didn't have the... Have the you know the the fan base to take them on forward. They they just didn't have that really big hit. 
Right, exactly. You know what I mean? Which is unfortunate, really, because they're a great band. And speaking of that, back in the mid '80s, when you signed to EMI with the first uh, "Innocence Is No Excuse" album, followed up with you know Rock and Nations, Destiny, it seemed like you were you were kind of going for that hit uh, that was you know, trying for the. Uh, yeah, I think people were manipulating us a bit to change our <coughs> change our style a little bit. Right. Uh, not not so much in Rock and Nations, I don't think. Uh, but, but definitely on Destiny. Now you got a couple of uh, homegrown bands here opening for you, Heroic and Borealis. Yeah. What what would you give them as a piece of advice in, in the digital age? Starting out a band, how would it be different starting out now? What challenge do you see as to when, opposed to when you started out with Saxon? Well, th there's nothing beats playing in front of a live audience. Right. You know, we've moved with the times, obviously. They, they have to get a really great website. Uh, the website's more important than ever. And they have to start getting a fan base by any means possible. YouTube's good. So, that, so you see you know, this my, as... Uh, Facebook's good. Is, Facebook. it, is it easier today Pardon? for a band to make it or to break than it is... Yeah, is it a curse or a blessing? Is it a curse or a blessing today? Well, like, opposed to when you started off? Well, bands do still make it. I mean, you know, I watched Airborne go yeah, from like a, nothing to quite big. Uh, from sheer exuberance really right uh, so it can be done I just think picking the genre you know picking the style that you play can be can be crucial it's just writing a song that that, that moves a generation of, uh, for a new band that moves a generation of young fans that's what it's all about one of the one of the goals of the metal voice our website is to educate the younger younger list uh, watchers and, mm. uh, and give them a little historical context so for you, what would be the must-have Saxon albums out of the collection? Uh, well, I think you have to have two, three, four, five. Yeah, definitely. Denim and leather. And then I, I think you probably need to have, you know, uh, it's difficult, really, isn't it? Because you know the the band have moved through different phases. Right. You know, I mean, Solid Ball Rock's great in the 90s. Um, Inner Sanctum, another strong album. Yeah, Metalhead was a favourite of ours. Yeah. Good. It's a very dark album. A lot of young fans came in Europe. We got a lot of young fans uh, with Metalhead. Right. So, uh, anyways, I just want to suggest to all our viewers out there, run out right away and purchase a copy of Call to Arms. And uh, to quote an opening line from the song, When Doomsday Comes off the new album, Resistance is futile. So go out and get it. And I just, yeah, want, I just want to thank Biff for taking the time yeah. out and meeting with us. Yeah, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure and a real honor. Thank you.